It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Chapter 3 I had spent the first day of my service in the employ of Roger Mayfield gathering rosebuds, which was my way of saying that I was putting together a laundry list of information with which I could answer the nearly inevitable question of exactly what in the hell I had been doing all this time. It wasn't bad looking, really. Put together with the assistance of Sergeant Ted Holm down at Robbery Homicide, who owed me a favor, and my old pal Freddy the Finger Hawthorne, who owed me more than a few, it was a list of known dirtbags within the city and environs with the requisite photographic skills who had a tendency to lean towards blackmail. The capsule reviews of each man's dossier included his police record, last known location, modus operandi, and any special proclivities or peccadilloes in which he might specialize. It was all good stuff and looked like it might have taken several days to put together, which was nice because all told it had taken about two and a half hours. See, in reality, there wasn't a heck of a lot I could do for Roger Mayfield as things stood, try though I might. The ball was in somebody else's court. When the blackmail campaign stepped up, I would be there. But it was entirely possible that this mysterious friend would sit quietly for some days and let him stew in his own juices. And if I wished to still be gainfully employed when said scumbag got off the pot... I had better look like I had been doing something. In reality, of course, the list was useless. Oh, it was accurate, and there was even a chance, if only a chance, that one of the two dozen men it profiled would turn out to be the guilty party. That would make me look pretty slick. But I couldn't very well go knocking on their doors and asking if they knew Roger Mayfield, and would they please stop shooting dirty pictures of him and his little blonde vixen of a mistress. There was really only one more thing that I could do at this point and only since today happened to be Tuesday. I piled into my old Ford and took a spin down chapel as far as Cannon, where I stepped out to make a few inquiries. Roger Mayfield had no intention of missing his regular field trip to the scenic sites of Janet Timms, and I couldn't say that I blamed him. I had no trouble spotting her apartment from the street by the window moldings, and noted with no satisfaction nor surprise that the Venetian blinds were down in the bedroom. Judging from the angle of the photo, or the lack of it really, It seemed pretty clear that our cameraman had been right across the street. The building wasn't hard to spot. I parked the heap on cannon and pulled an old sample case from the trunk. The case was empty, but I have never been much of a brush salesman and didn't figure on getting more than a few words into my pitch. I took a quick look at the lock on the street-level door. If we assume that our blackmailer did not routinely occupy this building, we must also assume that he had got past the lock after hours. It was an old one. I probably had four or five keys in my pocket that would open it without too much trouble, so that part held. According to the directory in the lobby, the second floor was home to a notary, a bookkeeper, and an employment agency. There was a manual elevator waiting at the ready, but I didn't like the look of it and took the stairs. My career prospects as a brush salesman still appeared to be extremely limited, but I managed to get far enough into my pitch in each of the offices to get a look out the big windows and pick the notary's office as the most likely candidate. The girl behind the desk was heavyset and a real mouth breather. I didn't get much more than a peek at her boss, but he struck me as about as sinister as a church mouse. For the moment, I removed them from the list of suspects and went back to the car. Someone had taken pictures of Janet Timms entertaining my client in a manner most thorough. They had been taken from the notary's office across the street. That meant this was planned. On the night in question when the notary's office was broken into, the blinds in Janet Timms' bedroom were wide open and all the goodies on display convenient. There was no earthly reason to believe that our mysterious friend would be watching again tonight. Far from it. Mayfield would be on alert, for whatever that was worth, and blackmailers are by nature craven little cowards. No way they gave away their position and then came back to the same duck blind. But it was Tuesday night, I had nothing better to do, and I'd look like a complete moron if I didn't stick around. So I noodled with the radio in the car, wondering if I could not tune in the ball game without completely draining the battery played hell with my dramatic getaways when I had to get out the jack and turn the crank to get the heap rolling. I looked up from the dashboard of the heap where I sat, and suddenly there she was. Janet Timms in the flesh. Well, not exactly in the flesh, not as much as I had so recently seen, but she was there right enough. The black Ford parked ahead of me was all that stood between us as she waited facing the traffic on cannon, watching for a slow moment to dart across. I watched her as she watched the cars. She was a pretty thing, all right. 
The fading daylight and the full set of clothes made her a little less heart-stopping, to be sure, but it was all there. Her dress was brown and seemed simple enough. It was new and fit her like it was made for her, which I assumed it was. She was wearing a wrap that didn't look quite warm enough for the day, but whether this was bad planning or a general desire to look like a little lost lamb, I couldn't say. Her hat was one of those rounded kinds that hugged the line of her face down past the ears, and her face was narrow enough that the roundness of the hat didn't make her look like a cherub like it did so many women. It suited her, is all. All of it suited her. It was a carefully prepared effect of casual elegance and possible innocence. The latter I knew to be fraudulent, but I was in no position to hold that against anyone. The traffic slowed and she made her way across at a trot. I watched her do this appreciatively. She didn't look like a tramp or a business girl, but I couldn't accept that the hardware on display would be contented by a scheduled Tuesday tryst. Perhaps she had two or three other Roger Mayfields on the side. That would make a certain amount of sense. If you weren't going to be the kept possession of one very rich man, and there was no reason why Janet Timms couldn't be, I assumed it was because she didn't want to be. Being the dirty little secret of a handful of reasonably successful men would keep the wolf from the door. And if you turned each one for a big enough payout before the well ran dry and they went back to their wives, well, that would be so much the better, wouldn't it? She disappeared into the doorway that led up to her apartment, and I felt a pang of guilt for any number of assumptions I was making, but I was pretty sure that I was right. Girls like Janet Timms did not go for regular guys like Mayfield, however much I and every other regular guy might wish it otherwise. She might not be in on the blackmail, but she'd have her own angle somewhere. The real question, and this did bother me a little, was why in blazes Roger Mayfield struck somebody as a swell target for blackmail? Assuming the shutterbug was working with Miss Timms, you have the very best bait you could get, and you go after guppies like Mayfield? Quantity over quality? It was safer, I suppose, and maybe the girl enjoyed her work more than I imagined. Some do. At any rate, it wasn't a mystery that Roger Mayfield wanted solved. He had a problem. He wanted it fixed, and I was his hired hand. Right now, he was unwilling to admit that his bombshell could be involved, so I would let that lie. But when nothing happened tonight, the options would be to wait and see what developed, or put the scare into Janet Timms and see what shook loose. I decided not to think about that right now. I still had some retainer to burn and could take things as they came. Thank you for listening to Thursday Thrillers right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic live and theatrical audio plays, Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series. Saturday Story Circle, for kids and families alike. And Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network, listening and imagining together.